welcome to class. Uh, you are welcome to chapter six of this course. Now we are taking intangible assets. Intangible assets. What do you understand by intangible assets? Uh, when we say something is intangible, uh, when a, an asset is intangible, uh, when it uh, cannot be touched, it has no physical, it has no physical presence. Okay, you cannot touch it, you cannot see it, but you can feel it. You can, you can, you can feel the value. Okay, so that's that. Uh, and you can you can control it you can restrict order from the use okay you can control you can restrict order from from the use and you what you earn uh some benefits you earn some income you earn some reward you have some gain on what on uh on these what on these uh, assets okay so such as a uh, brand okay brand we have trademarks, we have uh, patent rights and the likes. Okay, so uh, an asset is a resource controlled by the company as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow. Okay, so an intangible asset is what an intangible asset is an asset in which what in which uh it is identifiable okay and non-monetary asset without what without physical sub substance okay so you what you as a result of past events okay you can control the resource and as a result of what as a result of past events you enjoy future economic uh, benefits okay so, future economic benefits comes from it. So, an intangible asset is an identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance. Okay. Uh, now, how do we recognize an intangible asset? An intangible asset must be recognized if and only if it is probable that future economic benefits specifically attributable to the asset will flow to the company and the cost of the asset can be measured reliably. Okay. It's just as we recognize uh, other assets. Okay. Uh, such as uh, in, uh, investment property and uh, property, plants and equipment. Okay, so the only difference is that these has was no physical uh, substance and uh, it is a non-monetary, uh, non-monetary asset. Okay, so uh, measurements. How do we measure an intangible asset? An intangible asset must be measured at cost when first recognized. That's initial recognition okay so then what are the means of acquiring what what are the means of acquiring an intangible asset a company might obtain control of an intangible resource in a number of ways first intangible assets must might be what might be purchased separately okay such as good we patents brands trademarks and the likes okay so they can be what they can be purchased separately and they can be acquired in exchange for another asset they, they can be what they can be acquired in exchange for what for another asset and giving it can be given to a company by way of government grants okay it can be given to a company by way of what by way of government grants and it can be generated internally okay uh, goodwill can be generated what internally, uh, and also it can be acquired in a business combination. It can be acquired in a business what in a business uh, combination. Okay, so mind you, it is only goodwill. Okay, it is only goodwill acquired in a business combination that is what that is recognized under IFRS theory. Okay, so any internally developed goodwill. Or internally generated goodwill will not be what will not be recognized should not or should not be recognized should not be recognized are we there okay now let's take it uh one after the other 
Let's take the internally generated uh, intangible asset. An internally generated intangible asset is an asset created by a company through its own efforts. Okay, so an internally generated asset differs from an acquired asset that has been purchased from an external seller. For example, a publishing company may build up legal copyright by publishing uh, books. Okay, so may build up or may build up legal copyrights. Okay, legal copyrights by publishing uh, books. And then how do we recognize uh, intangible assets? Okay, so now ISA prohibits the recognition of the following internally internal what, internally generated intangible assets. It prohibits goodwill generated internally, brands, math ads, math ads, publishing titles, and customer lists. All these, if generated internally, are what are prohibited in accordance to IES 38. However, if they are acquired separately, okay, or they are acquired uh, through business uh, combination or in a business combination, such will be what will be recognized. Are uh, we together? Okay, so let's take this research and development. Research and development uh, of intangible assets. The term research and development is commonly used to describe work on the innovation, design, development, and testing of new products, processes, and systems. Okay. They are what they are used in words to describe work on the innovation, design, development, and testing of new products, processes, and systems. Assessment of whether an internally generated intangible asset meets the criteria for non for what for recognition requires the company to classify the generation of the asset into two phases either what either as a research or a development okay so either was either as a research or development now what does the standard say about these two classification if an asset or if it is a if a research and development is a is just an ordinary research okay or uh, it's just a research on the internally generated intangible. How do we recognize that? And if it is a development, it is an enhancement, then how do we recognize that? Okay, so now let's take this one after the other. We start with research. Research is original and planned investigation under with the prospect, undertaken with the prospect of gaining new scientific or technical knowledge and understanding. Research is the original and planned investigation undertaken with the prospect of gaining new scientific or no technical knowledge and understanding. So examples of research and activities include activities aimed at obtaining knowledge, activities aimed at obtaining knowledge, uh, obtaining new knowledge, activities aimed at obtaining new knowledge, then the search for alternative materials, the search for alternative materials, products, or processes. The search for alternative material, products, or processes. And the formulation and testing of possible alternative for new materials. Formulation and testing. Formulation and testing of possible alternatives formulation and testing of possible possible alternatives for new materials products or processes okay so now let's take development development expenditure or development is what is the application of research findings or other knowledge to a plan or design for the production of new materials, devices, new materials, devices, products, processes, systems, or services before the start of commercial production or use. Development is the application of research findings or other knowledge to a plan or design for uh, the production of new materials, devices, products, processes, systems, or services before the start of commercial production or use. Examples of development activities include the design, construction, and testing of pre-production prototypes and models, and the design, 
construction and testing of new materials, products, or processes. Okay, so these are the these are examples of what of uh, development and activities. Okay, so now intangible assets acquired in a business combination. How do you recognize intangible asset acquired in a business uh, combination? Any intangible asset identified in a business combination will be recognized as both recognition criteria are deemed to be recognized as both what as both recognition criteria are deemed to be recognized. So if what uh, if an intangible asset is acquired in a business combination, its cost is the fair value at the acquisition date. And if cost cannot be measured reliable, then the asset will be sub subsumed within goodwill. I take this again. Uh, an intangible asset acquired in a business combination uh, should be measured at cost, and this cost is what is the fair value at the acquisition what at the acquisition date. So if this cost cannot be measured reliably, then the asset will be subsumed within what within a Good with them. What we mean by that is that we, the, the assets will be uh, taken as what well, as a good we acquire through business uh, combination. Okay, it will be subsumed to be what it will be subsumed within good with. So then, after initial recognition, how do you measure uh, intangible assets acquired through or uh, acquired in business and combination? Now you have the choice of policy. Intangible assets are recognized at what at cost when first recognized meanwhile the cost you are using what is the what is the fair value at the date of uh, acquisition now the two measurements models for intangible assets after acquisition are what are the cost model and the revaluation what and the revaluation model now using the cost model you have your cost less accumulated what accumulated uh, depreciation okay mind you for intangible assets we don't have depreciation but you have what you have an uh, impairment you have what you have an uh, impairment are we together so yes, you might be told by the examiner you might be told by the examiner that what the asset has been depreciated by so 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 amount or by so 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 figure. Now that depreciation you take it as what you take it as an uh, impairment. Okay, you take it as what you take it as an uh, impairment. Are we together? So cost less what less accumulated what accumulated in, uh depreciation or impairment. Are we together? Okay, so uh these you do as what as initial what, at initial record and uh, sorry at subsequent or subsequent uh, recognition then you, if you choose to use the revaluation model the revalued amount less accumulated depreciation since the most recent uh, revaluation revalued amount less what less accumulated depreciation since the most recent uh, revaluation okay so now let's take classes of assets class of assets under or under intangible asset the same model used or the same model should be applied to all assets in the same class a class of intangible assets is a grouping of assets of a similar nation and, and used in an entity or in an entity's uh, operation. Yes, they are was they are of similar or they are of similar characteristics, they are of similar nature, they are of similar use, okay, in what in that uh, in an entity's uh, operations. Now examples of separate classes may include what brand names, math apps and publishing titles, computer software, licenses and franchises and uh, copyrights, patents, and other industrial industrial property rights, service and operating rights, recipes, formula, models, designs, and prototypes, intangible assets under development. All these are what? All these are, are intangible assets that are of similar nature. Take, for instance, recipes, formula, models, design, and words, and uh, prototypes, okay? So if you are into production, the recipes you use, followed by the formula, the methodology you are using, models and designs, all these are what, all these are your critical success factors. And uh, they, they are what, they are, they, 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 they are all, uh, they are all uh, intellectual property, okay, they are intellectual property to your, to your organization, are we together? So also intangible asset under or under development. Okay. Now how using cost model to measure what using cost model. An intangible asset is carried at its cost less any accumulated amortization and any accumulated impairment losses after initial recognition. Oh sorry. 
Uh, yeah, it should be what it should be amortization and not a uh, impairment. Okay, amortization. Okay, amortization. Okay, so. So let's what less any accumulated amortization and any accumulated uh, impairment losses after initial recognition. Okay, and uh, mind you that an asset is said to be impaired when the carrying amount exceeds what when the carrying amount exceeds the uh, revalued what exceeds the revalued uh, amount. Okay, when the carrying amount exceeds what exceeds the revalued what revalued. Uh, Amount and your revalued amount is what is the higher of the fair value and the value in use. Higher of what higher of fair value and value in use are we together? Okay, so uh, using revaluation was using revaluation a model. Okay, so an intangible asset is carried at and at the what at a revalued amount. So it's fair value at date of revaluation less than any subsequent accumulated amortization and any what any accumulated uh, impairment or any accumulated uh, impairment losses. Okay, so that's what that's how you revalue what that's how you revalue the uh, your uh intangibles. Okay, after initial recognition. Now this is only allowed if the fair value that is the revaluation model is only allowed if the fair value can be determined by reference to an active market in that type of intangible asset. So in the case whereby the fair value cannot be determined with reference to what with reference to an active or to an active market, then the intangible assets will not be what will not be measured as fair value. Okay. So now what is active market? An active market is a market in which all the following conditions uh, exist. An active market is a market in which all the following conditions uh, exist one the items traded in the market are homogeneous and two they are what they are, they, they are willing buyers and sellers and these can normally be found at any time okay prices are also available to the public so no hiding prices and buyers and sellers can easily be located or found at any point of time and yeah the items traded in the market are, are homogeneous okay so how do you amortize intangible Asset. Now, a company must assess whether the useful life of an intangible asset is a finite useful life or an indefinite useful life. Okay, is a finite useful life or what an indefinite? So, an indefinite useful life is what it, the asset will exist the perpetuity. Okay, it, it exists for what for life, or we cannot actually determine when such asset will not be put, cannot be or can no longer be put to use. Okay, but while if a finite what a finite a uh, useful life is what is a useful life that is known from the start of the what of the use of the uh from the start of what when the asset is being put to to use like say five years ten years twenty years oh we can determine the useful what we can determine the useful life when the asset will no longer do when it will no longer be relevant for use okay so or has no uh, uh, residual or residual value now we together so uh if the useful life of an intangible asset is assessed as being finished, then the company must what must assess is useful what must assess its useful life. However, an intangible asset is assessed as having what's having an indefinite useful life when based on analysis of all the relevant factors. There is no what there is no foreseeable limit to the period over which the asset is expected to generate net cash inflows. Okay, then when do we dispose of our intangible assets? The rules for the recognition of intangible assets are the same as of what as for property plants and equipment under IES 16. The rules for the recognizing intangible assets are, are the same as for what as for property plants and equipment under what under IES 16 accounting for their disposals. Okay, so how do we recognize that you what you write off you what you write off an, an asset when it is or when it is and being dispose you they recognize you no longer what you no longer carry it uh, forward okay the kind of amount you have to be written down to or written down to zero so there is a gain or loss on disposal equal to the difference between the net disposal proceeds and the current value of the asset at the time of disposal so where your net carrying this net disposal proceeds is what is the disposal value 
let's what let's any cost to sale of such an asset okay so that's that and your net was your net gain or gain on this or loss on disposal is what is the difference between the net disposal process and what and the carrying value of the assets are we together so uh once again, mind you, the kind of amount or kind of value of an asset is what is the cost less the accumulated depreciation or amortization and the accumulated impairment losses, if any. Now, uh, what are the disclosure requirements? Uh, disclosure requirements of IAS 38. Okay. Now, uh, uh disclosure requirement of IAS 38 is that the only additional disclosure we have compared to, uh, in addition to PPE is that we have to tell the users of financial statements whether the useful lives of the asset are finite or indefinite okay so also if the useful lives are finite the useful lives or amortization rates used should also or should also be disclosed okay and if the useful lives are indefinite then the current amounts of the assets and the reasons supporting the assessment that the asset has an indefinite useful life okay if the useful lives are indefinite, you should di disclose the, the kind amount of the asset and the reason supporting the assessments that the asset has an indefinite useful worth, has an indefinite useful life. Okay. And for any intangible asset that is individually material to the financial statements, the following disclosure is required for any intangible asset that is individually material to the financial statements. The following disclosure is required a description its current amount and the remaining amortization uh, period okay the description of the as intangible assets the current amount of the intangible asset and the remaining amortization period should was should be uh disclosed okay are we together so the total amount of research and development expenditure written up as an expense during the period must also was must also be disclosed okay the total of the total amount of an intangible asset the total amount of an intangible asset that is research and research and development expenditure written off as an expense during the period must also must also be disclosed okay now does that accounting was accounting a uh, policies for was for intangibles for intangible uh, assets IS1 requires the disclosure of accounting policies used that are relevant to an understanding of the financial statements. There are several areas that are important to explain to users of to the users of financial statements, one of which is what is the amortization policy adopted. Now, the depreciable amount of an intangible asset must be written off over its useful over its useful life. Okay, the depreciable amount of an intangible asset must be written off over what over its useful life. That is at the end of its useful life, useful life. Uh, if it has no words, if if it has no square value, okay, it it should, it should be written down to what's written off to zero. So formulating a policy in this area involves what involves estimating the useful lives of different categories of what different categories of uh, intangible assets. So secondly, the development uh, expenditure does the company have any? So if the company have any development expenditure, then you choose to what you choose to what to capitalize your development or to your development and uh, expedition. So you only expense that in you know, in an exemptional or in an exemptional cases that if the development expedition does not most that does not meet what does not meet the five criteria stated in what stated under IAS 38. Okay. So the the intended use of sale of the of, of the what of the intangible asset. Okay. If there's what if there's any uh market, okay. If availability of market, the reliability, okay, that is if it is probable that the assets will generate or will generate a future economic benefit to the entity, okay, and the entity has capacity to or to complete, okay, they have what they have the capacity, they have the intention to complete the asset, the intangible asset that you towards that to be readily available for use or what or that uh, or for sale, okay. So and uh, another one here is that. Uh, intangible asset acquired in business uh, combinations in the period okay so and uh, we have what we have uh, whether the company has intangible asset whether the company has intangible asset assessed as having what having an intangible indefinite useful what's useful life 
So all these should be what all these should be disclosed. And right? together, all these should be what should be disclosed. Is that clear? So uh at this point we've come to the end of this uh, chapter and we meet in the next class where we'll be discussing other parts of this uh, of this course. Thank you and have a wonderful break. Goodbye.